like to start. Coach was around three minutes ago. You saw just nine, number eleven, running and jumping and crapping all over the place. Did you hold that in your pocket until that point, or did you? Was it just a? Oh, that's exactly. It was all <laughs> coaching. I drew that up. I designed that. You want the book on that? I'll have it printed. No, I can't. You know, they did. I mean, these guys right here and their and their teammates. You know, I can't sit there and say, yeah, we drew. That's just how we drew it up. You know what? They they went out there, turned up the gear in the energy and effort level. And, and, and played with a sense of urgency, obviously, like we needed to, and they got results. They got them to turn it over, they got them to tighten up, and we converted, you know, and, and you know, we, we got the result we wanted, obviously. So, I, you know, it's it's not anything X's and O's, no, no, right here. That's what it is. Coach Peck, this game seemed to unfold almost identically to the La Lumiere game back in December. Was that on your mind as you were making that run? Absolutely. You tell. As a matter of fact, at halftime, that's the first thing I said. Here we go again, December 29th, Lala Mirror, guys. Here it comes. Here we are again. We, did you like that feeling? Is that where you want to go back to? So we kind of had that. You know, she's the one thing I will say. I, I pulled out everything motivational. You know, you know, I blasted them. You know, I said some words that I'm not going to say here that I wouldn't say in front of my wife. But you know, that I wouldn't seem to get. I wouldn't seem. To get the results that I wanted, and then I tried to reason and logic and be calm with them. And I don't know when it clicked or what I was saying and what tone, but at some point their switches went on, and that was them, you know. And, and, and they they turned it on and got it done. Coach, talk about your belief in this team because I watched your body language on the sideline, and even after the ten point third quarter, and when things really looked hopeless, five minutes left, you never changed. Now you know it's like. Our, you know what's the most important position for us? It's like a quarterback. You know, uh, Peyton Manning's not going to show distress, and, and, you know, because and your point guard can't on the floor. If I'm showing it as the leader, what do I expect the five on the floor to do? You know, it, I, you know, again, inside this is a different story. If you take a picture on the inside, you'd see a guy going nuts. But you know, on the outside, they've got to see a calmness in them. Because if I'm up in arms and going nuts, then what do I expect them to do? You know, I, I need we need to, we need to focus because there's still an objective, and there's a way we got to go about the process in order to get back to where we want to get to. So, you know, that's that's just a little bit of my personality too. I'm not a I'm not a hoot and holler and rant and rave type of guy personality wise. So, Coach Peck, uh, I guess down the stretch, really all you could say, Brandon Ashley, uh, 31 points. Uh, it, it's like and not only down the stretch offensively. He was like a vacuum cleaner defensively. Uh, how, how how proud of you are of, of his efforts today? Along with, of course, these these gentlemen that are here. Nigel Williams Goss getting 17. Winston, of course, getting uh, 10 in his last high school game. And, and, and Anthony Bennett as well. I mean, how impressed are you with this win coming back? The largest deficit in 19. Uh, and apparently it was 16. I thought it was 14 going into the fourth, but it was 16. So how impressed are you? Total team effort? Oh, absolutely. And the one question I got from Brandon is a little upset. What the hell were you waiting for? <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> almighty. I mean, golly, I'm, I'm, I'm getting old, and I don't want to get older in a 32-minute game. But no, he put the cape on. I mean, he Brandon Ashley was the Brandon Ashley he's supposed to be, to be honest with you. He's capable of that. And you know what? He put the cape on, and other guys... <clears throat> went along and, and, and did their part in, in, in the segments that they needed to, they put their cape on. So it was, it was, I couldn't be more proud of a group than I am of this group today in that second half in their effort. I, and that goes, I mean, and we've had some pretty good groups yeah. and some pretty special kids. This one takes the cape. So the four for Brandon Steel, so the four Superman kids. Absolutely. <laughs> for Brandon and Anthony, just summarize this whole week starting at McDonald's. And now, you know, you win this tournament. Um, well, it's been a pretty fun week, pretty intense, going hard every day for like a week now. Um, it ended off pretty well, I would say. Um, I'm kind of sick and tired. Losing my voice, it's going to help my team out. But overall, it was pretty fun. Brandon, same. Oh, man, you know, just, it's been an amazing week, you know. Um, going to McDonald's was a huge honor. Um, coming here afterwards, you know, you're exhausted, and you kind of just want to, you know, get it over with and get back home. But, I mean, you really got to stick it through and fight through it, and we, we did that, you know, I'm a part of my team. Folks, talk about uh, Nigel's defense at <coughs> 11 at the end of regulation. He had some help behind, but it's pretty much on him to turn the guy. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, well, that's what, you know, we, we counted on him to do all year and, and, and Winston, you know, our emphasis is defense. You know, a lot of these guys tell you they've been doing more shell defensive work since September than at least as much as any team in the country. They go at any level probably. They're probably sick to death of it. But bottom line is that's their emphasis. And, you know, it's, you know, he had to do it on Kendrick Nunn. You know, he had to help on Shabazz and, and Jabari Parker, Marcus Smart, Phil Forte. You know, Casey's another one. Casey's just a terrific, tremendous player, and he's he's, been, he's probably one of the more difficult ones of all those that I've listed, just because of his speed with the ball and his ball skill, and his mindset as a true point. You know, he sees things that are two to three steps ahead, and he's got an unbelievable feel and motor. So, you know, that's what he's done for us all year, and you know, he picked the right time to, to turn it up a notch. Nigel, where does this put you guys in relation to Oak Hill, St. Anthony's? in terms of the best team in the nation winning this tournament? I mean, our, our whole mindset coming to the tournament was just focus on us. We had, we knew we had, you know, a potential three games left, and we just wanted to focus on these two games. Um, you know, it's a huge honor, you know, winning the NHSI, and um, you know, it puts us in the conversation. I mean, anyone can debate. You know, those teams are undefeated. They they did what they had to do, and we felt we did what we had to do. And so, I mean, I think it put us right there, like I said, in the conversation. What number do you expect to see Monday morning? You know, I'm not expecting anything. You know, whatever happens, happens. I'm just proud that we came out here, and all we can control was playing these three games and winning these three games, and that's what we did. So, I mean, whatever happens Monday, that's what it is. But, I mean, I couldn't be more proud of, you know, our team getting to win. Did you guys ditch to get a chance against Oak Hill? Were you kind of disappointed in that? Uh, you know, that's something, like I said on the first night when they interviewed me, I, you know, that's something we can't control. I mean, you know, Steve has his reasons. You know, he's in charge of that program. He's got to make decisions based on what he feels is best for that program. You know, and that's what he did. So, you know, that's out of our control. All we can do is control our, what we've got ahead of us. But the one thing that I will say, I guess the, if, if anybody wants to know, at least my feeling on, on it, I guess the best way I would describe it is if, if uh, if Alabama wouldn't have wouldn't have had another shot at LSU, that's probably you know how Nick would have felt, Nick Saban would have felt. That's probably how I feel right now. Randy, you had something like 15 points in the first quarter. At what point did you start demanding the ball? Um, <clears throat> I think I wasn't even really demanding to be honest. Um, my, my team was basically just feeding me. You know, they noticed that that I was that I was scoring. You know, that I had the hot hand. And, um, I was getting to the free throw line easily. And you know, there were points where. Um, they could have easily, you know, taken the shot, but they kept giving me the ball. And, and honestly, I just want to thank my team for that, and that's kind of what happened. This is for the seniors. Um, if you guys could just kind of quickly summarize your experience with, with Coach Peck and, and Matt Finley and, and what you feel like you're taking on with you to the next steps. I'll go first. Um, this is my first year here at Finley. Um, and uh, it, it was a struggle early season, you know, just leaving home, being away from family and everything. But, I mean, Coach Peck always stuck with me. Um, through the ups and downs, and it's been a, a huge honor to play for him, and um, it's been a lot of fun. Definitely glad I came, and it's definitely changed my life. And what are you taking with you in terms of how has the, the experience benefited you? Um, honestly, it's made me a better person on and off the court. You know, definitely a better defender, better player, and all that. But also, it's made me a better person off the court. Coach, um, this this is my third year, and uh, at first it was really rough for me, but uh, I stuck it out. Playing for Coach Pickett is probably one of the best decisions of my life. You know what I'm saying? Like Brandon said, it, it, it changed me more off the court than on the court. You know what I'm saying? Because obviously, to come here, you have to have talent, but it just makes you a better person off the court. Um, and as far as on the court, I'm different. I'm going to take the defensive mindset. You know, Coach Pick, the number one thing he says is to get on the court as a freshman, you have to defend. So I'm definitely taking that to college next year. Um, this is my second year here, and I guess hard work. And the practice that we go through is just hard. Um, go through a lot of defensive stuff. And then when we do go on offense, um, we're playing against the top um, people, top players in the nation. Um, but I don't know coming here. I'm happy. I'm real happy I came in, actually. Um, and as for next year, we're just going hard in practice every time. Um, going hard in games because you never know when it could be the last. Okay. Um, did you ever privately think about about signing the players or, or, or addressing it in a certain way that uh, because you guys kind of gelled without AD, you didn't play your guys' big games that you were like worried that maybe you might not find the right combination because everybody's now healthy in these three games? Yeah, you know, good question. Yeah, 
like, well, today I was searching for combinations for the better part of 32 minutes. And finally, it just kind of clicked. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, I, I don't know the answer. But yeah, you know, that's something that you do worry about it with our program, obviously, because we got two McDonald's All Americans and obviously guys that are top 25, easily 20, 30 players. So getting guys to play with other good players, great players, you know, is hard. That's more the battle than. Hey, here's the kind of set or play we're going to run, and here's the defense. Geez, that's the easy part of it a little bit, you know. So getting them to buy in and say, hey, I'm okay with eight points and four shots, you know. And, yeah, a little bit, but with the two guys that, you know, we've gotten, Brandon and Anthony, we talked to them about it before. We said, hey, look, Brandon was out with a little shoulder uh, um, injury there for a stretch since February, and, and AB's kind of just gotten back into the fold here first part of March. So he said, look, you guys have... You know, the, the group that we've been going with has had, had a good rhythm to finish out a regular season. Um, instead of disrupting it, here's what I'm thinking. I go, it's not set in stone. Let me put this out there to you guys. Here's what I kind of want to do. From a mental intimidation standpoint, at about the 5.30 or 6 minute mark, I want both of you guys to go to the scores table. And hopefully at that point we got a 6 point lead and the other team looks at that and goes, now they're bringing those guys in? Then you can crack them a little bit. So he gives you a little mental edge. So it was a little bit of a you know a mind game, but you know wanted them to make you know know what I was doing, and to say hey look, I'm asking you guys buy into this. It's not like you're not gonna play. You're look who finished the game. You know guys on the floor that finished the game. And again you know that's the important thing. Now to take us to the, on the end of regulation, you won on one base with eleven. You went left, you kind of turned and got him off bounds and went square shoulders. Did you know that he was going to pull up for that jumper there? Or did he give you a key or something, a tail? Or did you guess properly or just sound even? Yeah, no, when, um, you know, he had it and he was running down the clock. And I looked and it, it was like going from six to five and he hadn't really started to go yet. So once it got to four, I knew he was going to try to pull up. Because usually, you know, if you go to the basket, you can go at like 11, 10. So, um, you know, when I, when I saw that, I knew I had to, you know, be ready for when he was going to pull up. And so I knew was, the closer he got to the arc, you know, the more chance he was going to pull up. So I kind of just, you know, made a guess and it turned out right. For Winston, can you imagine the feeling in the other locker room if you on the other side? Uh, and the high school uh, career like that? In a, in a way I can, because at this tournament last year, we, we lost in this tournament. So from that standpoint, I can, but you know what I'm saying? I'm just proud that I'm on this team and have been on this team. <laughs> and, uh, so that's all I can say about that. I wish those guys best of luck, you know, but somebody had to lose. For what it's worth, uh, Coach Peck, uh, you know, I'm come, again, I asked you yesterday to come off an upset against Dwyer High School and now winning the national championship for the third time in four years. This thing's only been around <coughs> about five years now, I believe. Uh, what does that mean to kind of just put your name in the record books like that? And do you feel like there's more national titles to come here at the Horizon? Oh, I hope, I hope there's more to come. I mean, the, you know, the, the, the teams the previous teams and now this year you can add this year's team to that is set the benchmark high. You know, there's a precedent. In the five years that I've been the head coach, we've played in the national in a national title game four of those five years. You know what I mean? That first year we were in the prep, you know, on the side with the Brewsters and New Hampton. And then now in the last four in the high school side, last year was the first year we weren't competing in the national final game. You know, now we're kind of but I guess you could say back on track. You know, this is what this program is accustomed to, and this is what we set the mark at every year. This is the expectation for us. So um, this is what each group needs to strive for. You know, in this group now, you can put their name next to the previous groups that uh, they set the bar high. Coach, you guys obviously will remember a lot of human error game. <clears throat> when was the last time you actually had you were down that much and you won? You are down 18. You know, I, I got to tell you, we weren't. I don't think we've been down that much. You know, we, uh, if we were, we might have only been down, I would say, at the most two possessions. You know, our Todd, our system yeah, has all that. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, when we played Columbus, uh, Northland Columbus, we were down 14 and a half, came back and, you know, lost by three there with a one possession game. You know, last year we were down to Dwyer and kind of made a comeback a little bit. We were down to Norcross last year as well, down 18, and came back, one possession game with a chance to win it. Uh, but came up short on those that I just mentioned. So, boy, this, this might be a first for us. Brandon, um, 
Did you hear you guys ever think or you guys kind of knew you, you felt it and, and, and you see the momentum and so the feeling. Man. Did you guys just think maybe you guys might run out of time? Just run out of possession, not because you couldn't win, just because the clock is running. I think as a basketball player, um, you, you never think that thought. As a competitor, you know that you're going to win going into every game. And even down the wire, you can be down 20 with two minutes left. You still have that, that fire in you. You're going to win that game. I'm not letting my team lose. And my teammates were going to let me lose. So, I mean. Brandon, when you were working in the fourth quarter, did you expect a little double team action on you? I did. Um, I was a little shocked at first when I didn't start the double team. But at the same time, I mean, that, you know, it happens. You know, that, in a way, I'm kind of glad that they didn't. <laughs> I second that. Any more questions? Thanks, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, it's real. <laughs>